Hi and welcome to this, our Methods 3 and 4 lesson on determining the rule for a parabola. Now, in our previous uh, videos, we've been looking at how quadratics can be solved and writing them in various forms, which will aid us in sketching them, right? So we've had the sketches, we've been able to uh, draw by finding the turning point and finding the x-axis intercepts and the y-axis intercepts and anything else that we need there, axis of symmetry, for example. These are all important pieces of information to help us sketch our graphs. Now, obviously, a lot of work in mathematics, as I say here, seems to be taught unidirectionally. We feel like we teach it just one way. But we sort of, having taught it one way, hope you'll be able to apply the learning and do it reverse. And that's really what this lesson's about today. So we're actually now going to have an idea where you know, we give you information about quadratics and then ask you to come up with the quadratic equation that would describe that. Now, there are three different ways of writing quadratics and pretty much you've come across all of them. This is what I would call the standard form of writing the quadratic that ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if you wanted to try and find the values of a, b and c, because there's three unknowns, then we would need to have three equations. And to be able to have three equations, we need to be given three points on the graph. All right, so three points on the graph. If we were given those three points, and we just use algebraic techniques, as in simultaneous equations, to help us find the values of a, b, and c. There's turning point form, or completing the square form, where we might have something like a is equal to 2x minus 3 squared plus 4. So if they give me the turning point, that's great. That means I can put this information straight in here. But to find my value of a, I'm still going to need one coordinate. And then there's crossing point form, or maybe more importantly, the intercept form, which allows us to write things in this manner. Now, please always remember, as we've got here for both the turning point form and the intercept form, this value of a, because there might be a dilation. Never assume that the dilation is 1. Always put that value of A in. And again, you know, when they give you these two solutions or the two roots of the equation, you can put them in there along with maybe another coordinate and find out the values of A, B, and C. All right? Obviously, the values of B and C will come from our graph. And if we have something along these lines here, say this is my quadratic that crosses through let's assume that's not zero, let's assume that's one and four, then I could automatically write down a, y is equal to a, x minus one, x minus four. If they then give me one coordinate value on here, or they give me an intercept or something on those lines, I can substitute that coordinate in because they'll have given me an x value and a y value, which will then allow me to solve for that a value. Right? So this is great. It depends on the information that they actually give us. It's going to be a really short video, I think, because we're straight on to those examples. So, determine the rule for a parabola which passes through the points 1, 2, 3. Right? So, we've been given three points. And we know that we've got the formula ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, any coordinate is nothing more than an x and a y value. It's sort of secret code, as it were, to find or to substitute x and y. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So we know that for the first coordinate, we've got minus 2, comma 5. We know that 5 is equal to, we don't know the value of a, but I have minus 2 squared. We don't know the value of b, but we know x is minus 2 plus c, which gives us 5 is equal to 4a minus 2b plus c. Well, there's equation number 1. How can I come up with three other equations, or sorry, two other equations? Well, we know that we've got 0, comma, minus 3. So minus 3 is equal to a times 0 squared. You see where this is going, don't you? Plus b times 0 plus c, which that cancels, or that goes to 0. So we know c is equal to minus 3. There's equation 2, and I'm going to leave it as equation 2 for this moment in time. And then we've got, what have we got? 2, comma, 13, and exactly the same way we've got 13 is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2. And again, I'm still just substituting back into my original equation, plus c, which if we look at that, gives me 13 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. So now we have three equations. What are they? 4a minus 2b plus c is equal to 5. We have c is equal to minus 3, and we have 4a plus 2b plus c is equal to 13. And ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly where we put this information into our CAS, 
we solve for a comma b comma c and out comes our fabulous values that a is equal to b is equal and c is equal and again you could go on and substitute c and solve this simultaneously but what's the point right this is a cas enabled course and my advice to you is make sure you know how to use your cas and out comes our values of three two and we already knew c was minus three so we could now write our equation as y is equal to a which is 3x squared plus 2x minus 3. All right, so that's one way of doing it, using our cash calculator. What about this one? Determine the rule for a parabola if you are told the turning point is minus 3, 4, and it passes through minus 1, 11. Well, it's given me a turning point, so I'm going to use y equals a, x minus b, or squared, plus c. For example, and so we get y is equal to a, we don't know, x plus 3, Mm, squared and plus 4. We've got to now put in our turning point. So y is 12 at the point minus 1, comma 12. y is 12. A we don't know, which is we're going to find it out. x is negative 1 plus 3 squared plus 4. Take away 4 from both sides, give me 8 equals a and minus 1 plus 3 is 2 squared, which is 4. And as if by magic, a works out to be 2. And so we would formalize by saying y is equal to 2 x plus 3 squared plus 4. All right? Again, nothing particularly complicated. And in this situation, all the information has been given to us in terms of a worded problem. They may actually give you graphs, right? So I could have thrown in a few examples. But if you can work out how to do things using algebra, then I'm pretty sure the same comes true when they give you a graph. And the last example is find the rule for a parabola if you are told that it's two axis, sorry, x axis intercepts are minus five zero seven zero and passes through the point one comma eighteen. Well, why not just draw a quick sketch? And we know that this here is minus five, this here is seven, and it goes through the point one and minus eighteen. Let's actually write that as a coordinate rather than just a load of rubbish. And so we've got our x axis intercepts. We're knowing it's going to be y is equal to a, x minus b, x minus c form. And so y is equal to a, we don't know at the moment. Let's fill in the values we do know, x plus 5 and x minus 7. Substitute in our coordinate value of 1 minus 18 to give me minus 18 is equal to a times x, 1 plus 5, 1 minus 7. Minus 18 is equal to a, 6 multiplied by minus 6, ooh, which is minus 36a, is minus 18. So a is equal to a half. Oh, a fractional one. And again, having done that calculation, it's always a good idea to then formally state y is equal to 1 half x plus 5 x minus 7. Always make sure that you know what the question is asking you. So that was a fairly swift jaunt through determining the rule for a parabola. Hopefully it all made perfect sense. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.